Good morning. Um, it's a pleasure for me to be here with Arjen this morning at the Satelligence office in Netherlands. Um, Arjen and I first met back in 2019 um, when Satelligence was three years old and now it's 2023. So the company has grown a lot and it's a pleasure to talk to Arjen again about the whole journey. And back then when we first had our conversation, Satelligence was one of few or if not the only company that was even thinking about selling um, deforestation as a service for monitoring for companies. Um, and right now with the new EU regulation, um, you kind of look like a visionary, Arjen. Yes, yes. <laughs> we knew, that, of course, that at some point uh, an, uh, an EU regulation uh, would be coming. Uh, but we, of course, couldn't predict that it would be this soon. And now, uh, now that it's there or that it's upcoming, uh, we're pretty much, I think, uh, one of the few companies who's bootstrapped to really start delivering um, an operational service uh, based on remote sensing uh, to the market. So I, I, let maybe start at the very beginning. A lot of people know Satelligence, but for the, those of us who don't know you and know your work, could yeah. you describe your mission in a few sentences? Yeah, our mission, I can do it in one sentence. So our mission is to, uh, to stop deforestation. Mm -hmm. uh, and to do that, uh, we focus on the tropical areas because that's where most of the natural uh, forest on Earth is and also the most biodiverse um, forest of the world and to stop the deforestation it's a complex problem right there's no mm -hmm. silver bullet theory but we think that um, with the help of uh, remote sensing based uh, monitoring services we can be an important uh, uh, contribution to solving uh, the problem uh, creating a level playing field satellites don't have an opinion about what is changing on earth they just see um, status a going into status b um, and to provide that um, to all the stakeholders involved in this uh, in these issues um, yeah we think uh, that remote sensing can be a very powerful tool there yeah I mean you're preaching to the choir um, as somebody who believes in the power of geospatial tech to do positive changes in the world it's a very nice example what you do also that it can be a commercial success so let's start with the new regulation um, from the EU that wants to have deforestation fee products in eight different industries how do you see it from the perspective of Satelligence and from the perspective of um, a geospatial analytics company? Well, let's see. So it's one of the regulations I think that is intuitively easy to understand because everyone wants to yeah. stop deforestation, mm -hmm. so it's, it's easy to sell, it's a sympathetic uh, uh, goal. But then if you go into the details, that, that's where it really starts to hurt and, uh, and, and be painful. And this is like you mentioned the eight industries or the, the, the commodities. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be huge differences between commodities. That is one. Uh, the other one, how does this affect the geospatial world? Um, so before, like when we did the interview uh, a few years ago, then it was relatively easy to get uh, to tables, mm -hmm. uh, to the negotiation tables, because, oh, satellites, space industry, uh, come in, have a seat, have a coffee. Uh, so that would be uh, the reason you got to the table, but then you would spend 12 to 18 months explaining uh, why people should wow. okay. uh, uh, buy your product because people simply didn't see uh, the value. Mm -hmm. Now with the regulation, it's the other way around. Mm -hmm. So people are coming to us not because they are interested in satellites, but because they're interested in, uh, in solutions and real data like am I compliant mm -hmm. with this regulation? So that's basically the question that we answer. And the super nice thing for geospatial is that it is within the regulation, it is explicitly stated that there should be a remote sensing uh, service provider mm -hmm. or solution in place. So this all tremendously helps uh, us getting acquainted to a signed contract. Mm -hmm. I think that's now, we can do it now in 10% of the time compared to okay. a few years ago. So it's, a, it's, really, uh, it's really a big change. You said, you know, am I compliant or not? And that's the key element of the new regulation. Yeah. So, and you like to solve problems. You're not somebody who just sells technology for the sake of it. How does Satellisms then help your customers make sure that they are compliant with the new regulations? We understand that the people are not only interested, the people, the market, uh, in am I compliant, but mm. um, is the data that are purchased from Satellisms, is that audit ready? So is your data audit ready? And we know 
uh, what that means. We went through uh, auditing processes with uh, with the big four, uh, one of the big four uh, auditors. So we know what that involves, and uh, we are already making sure that the data that we deliver, the products that we deliver, mm -hmm. uh, are ready to be audited mm -hmm. and by the auditors. Because we also feel the pain of the auditors. So the auditors also don't know. So that's why we're not only educating the market, but also the auditors of the market. So how does what you already offer in terms of this monitoring the supply chain change because of the new regulation? Yes, this is also a very interesting one. And then I also go back a bit uh, in time. So before, traditionally, we were like satellites observe what's going on on the ground. So in the production areas of palm oil, let's say mm -hmm. that's and the palm oil is putting pressure on the tropical forest, for example, in Indonesia. So we know what's going on. So traditionally, our market would be the producers, mm -hmm. right, producing the palm oil. But then if you look at the information gap uh, at the producers, that's not really big, like they know their plantations, they know their concessions, they know mm -hmm. their vulnerable areas. And then the aha moment that we had was that if you uh, travel down the supply chain, so mm -hmm. downstream, uh, so the peanut butter in the supermarket, mm -hmm. like how do you know that the palm oil in that peanut butter is Came not from, from a yeah. mm -hmm. deforestation landscape? Mm -hmm. So then you have to go mm -hmm. back up the supply chain. So the information gap uh, of the consumer in the supermarket is much bigger than the producer on the ground. Okay. So we thought what you need uh, is linkage data mm. linking the peanut butter to the deforestation mm. or the non-deforestation uh, palm oil. Uh, and that's when we started, uh, uh, we, 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 made, we didn't make a pivot, but we, we, we changed direction or however you want to call it, um, by, inc by focusing on supply chains mm -hmm. and then connecting that to uh, what's happening on the ground, so mm -hmm. real-time deforestation uh, uh, monitoring. This is all good and fine, but then the weak spot is, is how precise and complete is your linkage data. And then, and then you get to the part that the further downstream the supply chain, uh, the less certain people are about their uh, supply chain linkages. Mm -hmm. And then what do you do if you don't know, if you don't have complete uh, linkage? And this is the beauty of the, of the new regulation. They foresaw that. Mm -hmm. They included uh, um, uh, something that they call a jurisdictional approach, okay. which basically means, okay, I don't know ac the exact location of the production area or the exact location of a concession or the ownership, but I do know that it's from um, this province in Indonesia, right? right? And this is something that is um, uh, independent and disconnected from supply chains and freely available. So we can aggregate the data at that level, mm -hmm. at the jurisdictional level, and then make the connection with uh, what's happening on the ground in terms of uh, deforestation and commodity production. Mm -hmm. So this is like a no regret mitigation, fail safe approach that always works. Yeah. And then on top of that, if you have complete linkage data, that's always better than you go to traceability to plantation mm -hmm. or traceability to concession, and you can make more precise uh, connections and predictions. Uh, but this is the basis of everything, because knowing what's going on on the ground is only part of the equation, but yeah. then how do you connect that yeah. to the supermarket uh, products? Right. Okay, that's one out of the three aspects of the regulation. The other one is the fact that you have to um, mention whether it's coming from a high-risk area or a standard and a low-risk. Yeah. You probably will publish its own list in the future, and I'm guessing you already have such a list internally. And we were talking about it when we were before the interview, and you said, um, "Yeah, the the lower risk areas are where deforestation already happened a lot." What's your view on that? This is part that oh, high risk area. That sounds very intuitive, but what is risk? Mm. And mostly, I think this risk is expressed as historical deforestation rates. Mm which then um, cynically uh, translates to if there has been a high deforestation rate in a certain area, the de future deforestation risk is very low. Right. Because the forest is already gone. Yeah. And this is already happening, like in the palm oil industry. People say, you want deforestation-free palm oil? I know exactly where to source from, mm. because all the forests are already gone mm. uh, from those areas. Yeah, it's interesting. I think maybe we should explore it in a bit more detail in another time. Okay, let's maybe shift gears and talk about the product because there's roughly 18 months to go before the new regulation will kick in. I know it's, there is still no date and stuff like this, but let's assume that EU sticks to its roadmap of 18 months. What do you have in your product roadmap over the next 18 months? Is it mostly 
getting it ready for compliance and getting yeah. external certification, things like this, or are you also developing new features? Uh, yes and yes. Uh, so we have this like one to two year horizon yeah. and we know a jurisdictional approach should be there. It should be audit ready data. So we have all these requirements which yeah. are pretty clear uh, driving the roadmap. So the roadmap, I think for the coming, yeah, for the coming 12 to 18 months, it's pretty clear what we're going to do. And this will be uh, hugely, hugely driven by the uh, EU regulation. You mentioned that in the past the roadmap was kind of influenced by the business needs and the new regulation tackles at the moment eight industries or eight different commodities, however you yep. want to call them. Is there one out of the eight or two out of the eight where you think it's going to play the maximum role in your roadmap or do you see them all equally? Because I know you've done a lot of work with palm oil in the past. Yeah, so for us soy I think it's going to be the key commodity. Okay. Uh, like palm oil and cocoa, they are pretty much established. Those commodities themselves uh, had active uh, round tables, so industry uh, defined standards, so they are already thinking about how do we do deforestation uh, uh, compliance. So palm oil is pretty much covered, cocoa is following in its wake, uh, doing pretty good. Also those are perennials, eh? satellite people like perennials uh, because you have stable uh, spectral signatures. Uh, soy is going to be interesting because it's from a politically completely different region. Latin America, mm. uh, please do note, I say politically different because you think we're a tech company, but politics drives uh, land use and land cover change, mm. which affects uh, what the satellite observes on the ground. So satellites can observe political boundaries. Have a look mm -hmm. at the deforestation rate in the previous uh, Brazilian government compared to now. Mm. I think you can pretty much see the election date <laughs> within, uh, within the numbers. Wow, okay. Yeah. That's a bold statement. I, d I don't know, man, if that's true. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I guess Let's we hope. have to, to take him at his word, huh? <laughs> no, but I, 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 I like the Bolsonaro numbers. Uh, you can see, oh, this is Bolsonaro. Um, so that's one thing. And then soy is an annual crop. Uh, there's going to be crop rotation, so much more dynamic. Uh, also, cloud cover is going to be much more important. Um, if you're building a yearly composite and there's several growth stages of the crop within the same composite, that's much more harder uh, to map. So technically, it's going to be a challenge, but probably the technical challenge is the, the easy part to solve. Okay. Um, and then also why soy is interesting is because uh, it's kind of a proxy for another one, which is cattle. So soy is... Okay. Uh, it's a feeder crop. It's a feeder right. crop. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's why it's, if you have to focus on one, uh, focus on... on Soy. And you also have a lot of experience in terms of the, let's say, social economical aspects because you had people on the ground exactly in the past in Indonesia, in Malaysia, yes. Myanmar, and so on, right? Well, so you've got a lot of experience in that sense. Exactly. Well. This, uh, so this is one of the founding principles of intelligence that that we don't believe in that we can solve the world's problems uh, behind a desk, behind your computer. And that's why we have people local on the ground uh, mm -hmm. in uh, Indonesia because you know if you're not in the network. You will visit those companies, you will be at the tables, they will be friendly to you, they will uh, do promises, but you, you have zero chance of doing any business if you're not in the right network over there. So this is for this particular market. We have people in, uh, in Cote d'Ivoire, in the cocoa market for exactly the same reason. You know, if you don't know the right people, if you don't know what's going on, like we, we go to the field and look at the rubber trees and why is the rubber tree different from a cocoa mm. tree? Yeah. We want to see it with our eyes and because that is making the difference and not uh, the satellite or the, the technological uh, program. And then uh, the same for South America. We have people there as well Okay. for the whole uh, soy and political uh, dynamic. Um. So Arjen, how, how do people reach out to you? If they want to learn more, what's the best way? Um, just visit your website or talk to you or talk Go to, to your Go to the team. website, send me an email. The website has a form, I think. Yeah, you can fill it in and then you get, uh, you get the pretty boy <laughs> contacting you, <laughs> not me. <laughs> or, or you send an email to, uh, to one of us and uh, we'll contact you uh, yeah, yeah. before you know it. Or visit one of the webinars if you can, ah. if you can. Okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> the pretty boy reference is actually an internal joke at Satelligence. You may want to explain that. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a sales uh, it's okay. a salesperson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's actually he's also a karaoke champion. Yeah. He's one of the advocates of uh, you know enjoy life. And That's work, actually work. the product that he sells is not satellite technology. It's enjoy it's life happiness. Uh, okay, I, I can't end the interview <laughs> on a better way than that. 
Um, Aryan, thanks a lot for your time. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank um, you, Mutu. To be here after all the years. The last time we <laughs> met, it was in Zandam in 2019. Yes. It's nice to see how um, Satelligence has grown over the years. And I also have to thank um, India for making this interview happen. You know, uh, you finally have a marketing person, so I can talk proper marketing than with you <laughs> about it. So that makes life easier as well. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Mutu.